Hey everybody, Ryan here at E-Trailer. Today on our 2021 GMC Sierra 1500, we're gonna be showing you how to install the airlift air helper springs for the rear axle. But before we get into that, why don't we check them out and make sure they're gonna work for your truck. So we actually have our air helper springs installed on the rear axle already. And before we get too deep into everything, what I wanna do is just kind of run them, run them through the course, you know? You know maybe we can throw some weight back here see how the truck performs, see how you're gonna live with it when you are towing or carrying weight around. And also, I think it'd be cool too, to uh, drive around without any weight or without a trailer, nothing along them lines, because you're not gonna be towing stuff 24 seven, right? So I feel like that's a pretty important uh, aspect as well on if they're gonna affect the ride quality or not. So uh, with that said, why don't we get going? So I really wanted to get some weight directly over the rear axle, just to really kind of test out our air springs. And, um, so I got about 180 gallons of Missouri rainwater here in this tote, so pretty good amount of weight. Um, and when I put that in there, truck really didn't squat all that much. Um, I got about 35 pounds of air in the bags, and obviously you can adjust them accordingly. You know, if you uh, if it's squatting down some, you put more air in it to um, to fix that issue. But uh, with that said, why don't we go ahead, hop in, and go do some driving? It feels good. We're not squatting down and looking up in looking up into the sky so it's a feels like a comfortable driving position and we're going to get going over some bumps just to kind of get some some movement going through the chassis i know in the past i've driven a, a ton of uh, half ton pickup trucks and usually once you get some weight in there they're kind of sloppy almost and with the airbags on this one it's feeling pretty good so far um like i said i really like to get some weight going through here uh, some weight transfer and some energy moving and actually the truck feels truck feels really good actually i'm kind of pleasantly surprised a lot of times you know you put these airbags on and it kind of stiffens stuff up a lot and it's still pretty comfortable in here honestly you can feel you know the suspension is working a little bit but it doesn't feel like it's gonna bottom out or it's or it's you know uh, in overtime by any means it's it feels good. Uh, everything's comfortable, and you know, if it was if it was my truck, I feel like I'd be pretty happy with them. We did our bumps, and now I'm going to do some evasive maneuvering. And again, in the past, uh, this is where I noticed trucks get really sloppy. You know, they almost get top heavy, and a lot of uh, understeer almost, and a lot of body roll. And we'll see if the bags kind of keep everything planted so i'm going to try to pick up speed we don't have a ton of space here to work with but it should be enough so getting pretty pretty aggressive here picking up some mile an hour and feels good ever so slight bit of body roll uh, but not bad at all definitely manageable when you turn the wheel you know the truck goes that way um, you're not having to overcorrect and everything else and keep in mind too you know with the bags being adjustable if you notice you know you say hey it, it, it kind of has a little more body roll than i'd like or or uh, whatever the case may be you can always kind of fine tune them pressures and kind of dial it in exactly how you want it so took all the weight out of the bed and uh, now what i'm going to do is let some air out of the bags probably run it five six seven pounds uh, per bag that's usually what you'd go with unloaded and just driving around town so I'll do that and we'll go for another drive and, and see how it feels. And with the half ton, I'm really curious to see how the ride is with no weight or anything. I've been in some, some uh, three quarter tons and one tons and they just beat you up, you know, they're so stiff. It's just kind of the way it is. But actually with this one, I'll be honest with you, it don't feel really any different. It don't really feel any different than it did when we had weight in it for the bags and, and right now it feels good going over these bumps so you know if you're hitting bumps and it's not beating you up and super stiff then chances are pretty good you know if you hit a little pothole or something like that it's not going to jar you around and and uh wear you out so that's a good sign there i'm happy to see that like i said uh, some of the other three quarter one ton trucks they would just you know rattle you rattle you apart so it's good to see that's not the case with this one and we'll do the slalom course again and, and see what happens 
So with our evasive maneuvering, we're really not looking for any improvement per se. These aren't really supposed to improve your, your, your suspension unloaded and whatnot. I'm really just gonna try to see if there's any negative effects um, and, and kind of go from there. So we shouldn't see any, but you never know. So I'm curious to uh, find that out. And as I'm getting going here, I mean, it doesn't feel any different than what you'd expect you know it's not like the the body roll increased or it got less responsive or or anything along them lines so honestly with with this amount of air in it you know you can't even really tell you got them on at least in my opinion um i feel like if you forgot to take the air out and you were just driving around unloaded with 30 40 50 pounds air probably would be pretty stiff but you know if you forget not a huge deal it's a quick fix you let some air out of it and uh you're good to go so now that we kind of driven around and, and felt how the airbags actually perform, let's just take a look at them under the under the truck. And I want to mention, obviously you'll have a heat shield in your spare tire up here, but we left it down that way we could actually see what's going on because it kind of blocks everything out. Um, but the way the airbags work are, are pretty simple. You know, they're going to fill that void in between your uh, axle tube and your frame, and that's going to provide that additional support as opposed to how it is from the factory, you just have a Johns bumper up there and all that really does is just prevent the truck from bottoming out. So it don't really give you any extra support. Um, and that's that's where the airbags that have come into play. So the, the cool thing with the airbag is that they're adjustable. So you can run these between five and 100 PSI. Uh, most people kind of find the sweet spot somewhere in the middle or on the lower end even, uh, but you have the option to to run them all the way up to 100 if you want. And, um, you know, compared to some of the other suspension enhancements, um, you know, these just give you that adjustability. So um, let's just say Timberins or Sumo Springs, for example, those, a lot of those will just replace your Johns bumper and almost provide continuous support, which is great. You know, they, they work and they're maintenance free, but you don't have, you can't fine tune them really. So that's kind of where the airbags uh, stand apart from them. Uh, but the thing with airbags, I mentioned that maintenance, you are going to have to keep a minimum of at least five PSI in these, even when you're not using them. So that is something you'll have to check uh, to make that easier and even just make adjusting them easier. You can always get a compressor. Uh, I really like the Airlift, um, the Wireless One. Had a ton of good luck with them, real easy to install. Um, they just flat out work. So that's kind of the benefit to an airbag there. And with this particular setup, so these are gonna be, uh, or these are gonna work with the AT4 uh, versions of the Sierra, as well as the, uh, the Trail Boss, the Chevys. Um, and I believe with those, they come with the factory lift back here. And so Airlift accommodated that, you know, this bracket is shaped a little bit differently up top here to accommodate that, that lift. Um, and that's pretty cool. They thought that through and, and did that because a lot of times if you get a lift or you, you have a lift, you have to get different brackets and some other parts to kind of make everything work right. So this kind of just comes with everything you need right off the bat. You don't have to you know think deep into it, wondering if you need different brackets and everything else. This, uh, this will bolt right up and you can call it a day. One thing I do want to mention as well, um, these will work with uh, fifth wheel and gooseneck trailer hitches. You know, generally speaking, I can't speak for every single hitch on the market out there, but just seeing how everything bolts up, um, you know, I feel like it would work with a lot of them. And they even give you some additional hardware to mount up the top bracket differently if you do have that type of hitch. So, um, yeah, that should that should work out for, for just about everyone out there. In terms of actually getting these installed, really not too bad. Um, sometimes airbags can be a real pain other times they can go on pretty smooth. And this one, or this set actually went on pretty smooth. Everything was easy to get to, nothing really too crazy. So as long as you stay focused, uh, this is something you should be able to do. But that said, why don't we go ahead and put them on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here underneath the back of the truck. And what I did was just temporarily remove the spare tire. Uh, that way we have uh, a lot more room to work. And of course it'll go back up once we're done. Um, and then what you can do is actually jack the frame of the truck up. So 
Uh, since I'm on a lift, I just have a, a pole jack here on the bottom of her hitch. And the goal is to lift the frame up but keep the tires on the ground. That way we increase the gap or distance in between our frame and our rear end. It just gives us uh, more room to work with the airbag and stuff. For those of you at home, <clears throat> excuse me, on the ground, you can always just take a floor jack and do it that way. And just remember to, you know, stay safe do it properly, use jack stands if you need to and everything else. But uh, with that said, now we can remove this heat shield uh, to give us more room. So there's gonna be a total of six 13 millimeter head bolts. So three on this side and then three more over here. I already took them out, but uh, we'll grab our socket and get these removed. this down and get it out of the way. What we can do now, since ours is an AT4 model, we have this uh, spacer block, I guess you could call it, sitting on top of the axle. We need to remove that. So on each corner of it, you're gonna have an eight millimeter head bolt. So we'll get all of them out. And then once all of them are removed, we should be able to just lift this up and get it out of the way. Now we can take off our Johns bumper. So you can take a, a 10 millimeter socket and an extension. And if you run this up through there, there'll be a bolt and we can loosen that up. Drop this down and set it off to the side. Now if we look, we're going to have our brake line and that's connected to a bracket, which is bolted to the um, piece here on our rear end. We're going to pull that bolt out using a 13 millimeter socket. So once this is out, then what we're going to do is they give you this um, little bracket here and you can put it on that. And then if we grab this bolt and a flat washer, I'm gonna put it through. On the back side of it, take a uh, the nylon lock nut. Get that started hand tight. And then take the factory bolt that we just pulled out. Pull that back in. Get that going. Snug that down. I might have to come back with a uh, actual wrench. Don't have a ton of space there with that bracket. It's okay though. We'll get this snug. Now we grab half inch socket and wrench and snug this down. Moving to the front side of our axle tube, we're gonna have this. Um, line cover protector deal and we're gonna take it off so you have three t40 torx bit bolts one at the very end that one out and one kind of towards the middle here and then one towards the center While we're right here, we can grab this bracket um, and one end of it will have a hole on it. You want that hole to face towards the front of our truck. And if you look, this little lip here 
All you're gonna do is just going to kind of roll that in and let it sit like that for the time being. At this point, we can start to assemble uh, our airbag setup. And so you're gonna grab this lower bracket. And when you do this, uh, you'll see one side will have some beveled edges. Make sure to kind of put that face down. And then this inside square hole here, um, you're going to take a carriage bolt, drop that down. And I want to mention these assemblies are going to be side specific, so just make sure to reference your instructions. There's some pictures and stuff in there to kind of get you going. But obviously we're on the passenger side. What I like to do, just to keep that bolt from moving around on us, is just take some tape, put a piece on there, and it just makes it easier uh, here a little bit later on. That way this isn't wanting to fall out on you and stuff. So a little extra tape there. And then what we can do is take one of the roll plates, which is this piece. And we're going to line up those holes uh, with these holes in the roll plate. And we want to use the inside holes. So these two. That'll set on it like that. Then we can take our airbag and we want the uh, bottom side of it, that's the side that we're going to be setting this down uh, onto our roll plate. So there's our two holes that are going to line up. We kind of talked about that. The top of the bag though will have two bolt holes and then another one for our air fitting. We want the air fitting to face towards the outside of the bracket, um, or the vehicle for that matter. So I'm gonna set this on here, and then I'm just gonna flip this whole thing over, get the roll plate lined up, line up our bracket, and then you can take these uh, Allen key uh, bolts here that can have a beveled edge and get these started. I like to get both of them going hand tight. That way it kind of draws everything together. Then I'll come back and just snug them up a little bit. And I'm using a 732nd size Allen key. I'll take that off my tool and grab a torque wrench. I'm gonna to torque these down to the amount specified in the instructions. And anything that I torque down, um, it'll be listed in the instructions, the amount. On the top of her bag now, we can take the other roll plate, line that up, and then you wanna take the air fitting that they give you, and with these, Make sure they're started right, because these are brass fittings. You don't want to get cross-threaded or anything. But you're going to tighten these down as much as you can by hand. And then grab a wrench. Uh, I think it's a yeah, half inch. And you want to go about another turn and a half. Something like that. Get that tight. And then we can take our upper bracket, which is this piece here, and line that up with everything. And you'll have these bolts. These ones are kind of more fine thread, if you will. A split lock washer and a flat washer. Kind of just like the uh, bottom, I like to get both these started. And then with these, they are a 916 head. I'll run them down. And just like the Allen key ones, come back with my torque wrench and tighten them down.
What you want to do now is just double check the height of your fitting in comparison to your bracket. So take a tape, measure, put it on top of the bracket. You're going to make sure that the top of the fitting does not exceed 7 eighths of an inch. If it does, tighten it down a little bit more uh, to get it below that. So we're in good shape. Grab our assembly now and work this uh, in the position here. It's going to sit about like this. And we'll take another carriage bolt that's going to drop down through the other side of our lower bracket. That you can take this guy, there's two holes in it. The brake line is kind of tight there, so be aware of that. But you're going to slide. carriage bolts through there. And make sure that this piece actually kind of snaps into the lower bracket. So you got everything through there and then you can take a flange nut and I'm just going to get these hand tight that way the bracket won't come falling down or uh, shift on us or anything. The front side of our axle, we're going to do the same thing. Take your bracket, make sure it kind of snaps in there. On this side though, there's just one bolt. So we'll drop our carriage bolt through there. And the flange nut, get that started as well. Now we can get our top bracket secured to the frame. So, um, to be the same setup on each side of the bracket. I already got this one done, kind of give you a, an after visual as well. But in our case, we're gonna take these U-bolts, they're gonna drop around the frame, make sure to go actually behind your wiring harness, obviously you don't wanna crush that. And those are gonna go through the holes there in our upper bracket. Um, if you happen to have a fifth wheel hitch or gooseneck or anything like that, where there's bracketry and stuff right here, they do give you another mounting solution, so see your instructions if that applies to you. But um, we don't have that, so we're using our U-bolts. But the way these are gonna work, just take them and drop them around the frame. Make sure they drop through. And just a flange nut and get it. Get it going hand tight here. And we'll have the same flange nut and setup, obviously on the other side of our bolt. We can snug up all of our hardware. When you're doing these carriage bolts and your U-bolts up top, you want to tighten everything down evenly. That way it kind of squares up with itself and uh, Everything will be proper. So all of these flange nuts are gonna be a 9 16 um, size. So grab that type of socket and do the bottom bolts first and then go up top and, and do our U-bolts. With these, um, if you don't have a perfect size socket, you can always just use a box wrench like this especially if you have a ratcheting one, it makes it a little easier. But these are gonna be a 9 16 as well. We'll just run these down all even, uh, just like we did the others. Once they're all snug, don't forget to come back and torque them down. Now that everything's torqued, uh, I went ahead and just bolted up our uh, cover here. Bolted that back up in place, the opposite way that uh, we removed it. At this point, we can start to route our airline. So they give you a big bundle of it, um, cut it in half, and each half will go to each airbag. Um, but this end is going to be then that plugs into the fitting in the top of our bag. And before you plug it in, you want to make sure that the cut is, is uh, clean and straight. So you want to use a tool like this, or there's a, a tubing cutting tool that you can use. 
or you can even just use a razor edge and you know set this maybe on like a block of wood and cut it straight down you want to avoid using a pair of regular snips because it could kink the hose and then it'll probably leak so uh, now that we verified this is a good clean cut we can get it plugged into the bag so with our cut line we come up to our fitting and these are just quick connect fittings so essentially all you do is you line it up and plug it right in you can usually kind of feel it kind of snap into place and once you feel that you're good to go you know we're hooked up so what i'll do now is route our airlines to the back of our truck and once i have that done i'll show you the path that i took to get there got our tubing routed just went up and over the frame and ran it along back when you're doing this you're pretty much in the wide open but do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts or anything super sharp but um yeah it comes down right through here and what we're gonna do, there's a bunch of different ways you can mount these up, you know, pretty much however you want and get creative. Um, we're just gonna use the license plate holes. So that's where your bolts, your license plate screws would come through with them little square holes up there. So I obviously pull them out, um, but you're gonna take the end of your tubing and thread on one of these uh, nuts that they give you, and then a star washer, we'll put that on and then just kind of feed it up through there. I just like that for now. Now what you can do is essentially repeat the same exact process over here on the driver's side. So everything's literally set up the same way, really with one exception. Um, that's this bracket here. So you'll take that bracket off and then they give you some new uh, hardware and some spacer tubes and just put that in and space that bracket out a little bit and that gives you the, the space that you need to get your U-bolts up there. So that's literally the only difference. Um, so once you have the bag in, you know, you can route your airline and the path that I took to do that, it just comes up over essentially the same way as the other side, you know, use some zip ties here and there to keep it secure and goes right into the other side of her license plate um, holder there. So here's where our uh, inflation valves come through and then you're gonna take the rubber washer and you might have to, depending on your plate, you know, uh, you might have to enlarge a hole in the plate a little bit to get these to pass through. Kind of just depends on the state you're in, I guess, if what style of plate you got, but either way, it passes through. Then you put on the flat washer and a nut. And then what I like to do is just tighten this down by hand Use a half inch or a 13, because you don't have to crank down on it by any means. Just get it snug, and uh, that's good enough. Now what we can do, we can put some air uh, in our bags to make sure that they're working properly and we don't have any leaks. Once we have our bags inflated, you wanna go between like 40 and 60 PSI, is usually a pretty safe bet. Uh, to check for the leaks, you want to come to your attachment points. You can listen, you know, obviously if you hear air hissing out of there, you got a leak. Um, and I also suggest taking soapy water and just spraying the fittings down. And give them a little while, you know, and what you're looking for is for bubbles to rapidly form. Um, it's usually pretty obvious. In our case, it looks like we're all sealed up. You know, you might get a little bubble as soon as you spray it on there. That's normal, but if you don't have the bubbles just continually forming um, nonstop, if that's happening, uh, then you have a leak. And so to repair it, you can let the air out of the system, simply pull the line out of your quick connect, recut it, plug it back in, fill it up full air, do that process again. And now that everything is wrapped up and we're done checking for leaks and, and, and everything else, uh, I went ahead, reinstalled our heat shield and our spare tire, the opposite way that we removed it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the airlift air helper springs for the rear axle on our 2021 GMC Sierra 1500.